Hi, I decided to film a YouTube video today to share my experience in my in the interview and the practical exam um, for the fine art course in Oxford. Um, I wanted to film this video because back when I was applying to the five universities in the UK um, and having applied to Oxford, I tried to do as much research as I could um, because I just wanted to know exactly how much to prepare, what to expect and all that. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are doing the same right now if you're planning on applying here or sometime in the future. Um, I did get rejected from Oxford and I, I hope that by me making this video it will help some of you guys figure out, um, you know, or feel more prepared in terms of what to what to bring with you or um, just to get an idea of what it's like in the practical exam and what kind of questions you should kind of mentally prepare yourself for in the interview. Um, I didn't have any access to this information just because when I did my research I, I couldn't find any YouTube video or any, I don't know, any, any personal um, information from a student's point of view. So. I, I just want to be the person that I wish I came across when I was applying just because I had so many questions. I did not know what to expect whatsoever. I just knew there was a practical exam that lasted four hours, a 20 minute interview, but there was nothing on like, um, you know, what kind of questions they'll be asking. Having um, been there and done that, I, although I did get rejected, I'm sure that, you know, you will benefit from listening to an insider's experience. A little bit about me, I'm currently 18 years old. I graduate from the IB program, or currently I'm graduating, um, without taking those exams, you know, with the coronavirus. But I didn't go to a foundation before applying to art universities just because I just, I just wanted to skip that process, just because I felt confident in my artwork already. However, being rejected from Oxford did make me realize, you know, maybe my work is underdeveloped, maybe that is a factor that played in my, you know, rejection. <laughs> and so currently I have applied to a foundation year and hopefully after that I'll go through the UCAS process once again and hopefully have a more better understanding of where I want to be, what I want to do in university and maybe that is something I lacked on um, you know, during my interview and maybe the examiners picked up on that. Maybe now that I got rejected and I'm taking this foundation year, it'll be a lot better for me. My overall experience in Oxford was really, really lovely. Um, I got a really positive vibe from there and the environment was really friendly and really peaceful. It's really different from London because it's less in your face, but um, there's a lot of students and also a lot of elderly people, so you have that range. So how it all started was I received an email after sending in my application, my digital portfolio to the university. I received an email from the college that I applied to, which was St. Edmunds Hall. Um, so I received an email from them congratulating me, saying I'm invited for an interview. And, you know, that was a really, really nice, memorable day. Um, and so alongside that email they also sent me a list of materials that I will be provided for in the practical exam. Now this list is actually really really great because I think, I mean this is what I did, but um, you can kind of pre-plan the things that you want to make using those materials or like the techniques you want to explore in your exam and show the examiners. Um, I don't know, it's, it kind of speeds up the process because when you're in the exam and you have a prompt but you, are, you, are, you also have a technique that you kind of prepared for, you can easily manipulate that technique to respond to the prompt that you choose. And that's what I did. I looked through the materials, I saw what, I kind of decided on what I want to use, what I'm most comfortable um, using and that's sort of what I, what I planned my project off of so I did kind of prepare beforehand I knew what I wanted to do I just didn't know what I wanted to do what I wanted to do with it on the day of the practical exam the art tutors distribute 
um, these papers to all students and on the paper it says it gives three prompts and you need to select one of those to respond to by making an art piece. Um, obviously anything you make is com completely unique to you so as long as you have as long as you know that you have responded to the prompt as best as you can in that given amount of time in the four hours that they give you um, then you're completely fine because um, they just want to see that passion that comes from you it doesn't have to be very direct and you have the choice to respond to it in any way that you want um, it doesn't have to be an obvious way it can be very abstract so I think it's a really it's actually really fun and I don't think I was really stressed when I was at the exam but I'm stressed in anything really so it was actually really fun like once you're in it you're in that zone you know no one can no one can stress you out any more than you stress out yourself so um, you can even like you can have your phone out you can put your earphones in I'm pretty sure some people use the internet to like look at ideas which I wouldn't recommend doing because if a tutor walks around just to check up like if every, every if everyone's alive uh, and they see you on your phone you know looking at pictures on how to draw this how to draw that it doesn't really look good on you and he might he might say something to the examiners um, I would recommend doing that but if you're really stuck of course go ahead you know um, I use my phone to listen to music because you know I always listen to music when I do art I'm going to insert the piece of paper that I got right now and you can see the three prompts that they give so I picked oh yeah I picked the third one the we should all live like rocks in a flat field um, and what I did I mean I already planned that I'm going to use the technique of paper cutting just because I love it and I feel like I feel like you can do so much with it so at first I I did I'm gonna insert a picture of what I did right here as well just so that you guys have a better understanding of what I did I changed my idea a bunch like I, I did what I wanted to do but then I tried to you know change its shape and change the background of it and I just experimented a lot because I finished qu kind of early um, because I already decided on the technique I wanted to, I wanted to do and um, a lot of people around me were like doing all sorts of things they were you know sculpting one of my friends he made a sculpture out of wire and it was um, responding to a different prompt but it was just it was his like perspective on the room like from where he was sat it was really interesting and um, a lot of other people were just drawing with like just a pencil it doesn't have to be anything like you know shocking but it just needs to be something from you like so something that can express you in the best way possible and because I love the paper cutting technique I decided that would be best for my like just to show what I can do in the exam and I don't think anyone else did that technique so I was kind of lucky in that um, so what I did was I cut out like rock shapes and like I made it I cut inside the rocks as well just to make it more delicate looking and um, when it says we should all live like rocks in a flat field I thought to myself you know no rock is the same and neither are we um, this might sound really cringy I'm really sorry for you guys but you know that's what I thought and so I just decided to make these like really different shapes so each one of them different and um, like we should all live like rocks we should all be different we should all be unique we shouldn't be the same and oh i i also remember that i wrote a little note just in case they did you know take the time to really look at the artwork and read about it maybe if you did leave a little note i wrote that like these rocks that i you know cut out also resemble fingerprints and that no fingerprint is the same and since you know our fingerprints are on our fingers you know on humans um, that no human is the same so I made that connection and I I hope they read that because if they didn't it's a shame <laughs> um, so I paper cut the the a a3 paper and I sort of elevated it with I don't know wires or something like that and it created like this really really nice shadow on another piece of paper that was underneath it and I struggled with um, you know holding up a piece of uh, holding up light above how to structure that generally so what I did instead was roll that piece of paper up with the cutouts and um, around it I rolled another wider piece of paper around 
and it made the shadow like onto the outer outer curved paper. I mean, you probably don't understand it a little better um, with the picture, but that is what I was going for, just to like play with shadow, light, you know, pattern. And what I did was, oh my God, this was so bad because I couldn't just leave my phone there with the torch on after the exam was over. So I, I wrote a little note and I don't know if they did it, but I wrote, um, please like put your phone here and turn the torch on. Oh my gosh, that's probably really bad now that I think about it because like, what if they didn't have a phone on themselves? But you know what? It's already happened. Like, now I'm just regretting things at this minute. But it's fine, you know? It's fine. It's like, it's the thought that counts. They probably could imagine it. They probably could imagine the shadow, hopefully. But yeah. Um, but when I was when I was doing the work, um, a lot of the other students around, I mean, they were doing crazy things. I was on the top floor because there are two floors since there's so many of us. We can't all fit on one floor. So I, at the start, I just ran up to the top floor just because I knew that there was space there and I grabbed a table and just sat. Like, honestly, you got to run and grab as many things as you can before they're out or like some people had to sit on the floor and take their exam there. By taking the exam, I mean just making their own artwork, which is fine. But like, I, I just want, I just wanted a table and chair. Like, that's all I needed. So... Um, but all the materials were on the first floor, so I did have to go from the second floor back to the first floor and it was really stressful just because I felt like I was wasting time, but in the end I did finish before the before the end, before the official ending. And um, just the artwork I saw when I was going up and down the stairs was really, really nice. It was really inspiring. Like there was this one girl who was sticking paper from the wall all the way down to the stairs. I mean, it was quite hard to like walk past the stairs with all that paper there and like try not to destroy that work. But like it was nice because it was so like open minded. Um, and then there was me like on a table with some paper. <laughs> no, but it's fine, honestly. I mean, I'm saying that now just to make myself feel better, but um, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, you know what, it's okay. Anyways, um, so that was the exam, it ended after four hours as it said, and half an hour later I had my interview. So for my interview, I was actually really stressed because I think everyone had their interview and practical exam on the same day, um, which is actually good because you you know you get everything over and done with in one day. But it was also stressful for me because I didn't know what to focus on when I was thinking about you know preparing for this or that. Should I review the techniques I'll be using for in the practical exam, or should I mentally respond to the questions I think they'll ask me? So it was really stressful for me because. I just didn't know what to expect because I did not get, you know, enough information on, you know, what the what the interview is like. What, what is it really like? For some people, the interview happened during their practical exam. So what what happened was one of the art tutors, they came in, called out a name and that person um, left the room and spent 20 minutes at the interview. So... This is kind of bad because it interrupts their work, their creativity, and it also disrupts other students because, you know, everyone's stressed and, you know, there's a tutor coming in, calling your name for the interview, the thing you've been preparing for most, you know, and so <clears throat> when they do that, it does disrupt you, it does stress you out, but it's fine. And it's fine, it's also okay for the individual who's going to have the interview because once they're back, even though they missed out on those 20 minutes, um, they do get extra time after the official ending to the exam if they need it, because some people obviously finish before, like me, uh, we, we finish before the practical exam finished officially. Um, my, my interview happened half an hour after the official ending of the practical exam, so I had time to change, you know, if I got any dirt on me. I just wanted to change, you know, not everyone did that. Some people went with like paint on. Just, I wanted to like look my best self, feel as, confident as I as I could so I went up to my room changed you know into some cleaner clothes came back and with my with my portfolio case I was just waiting outside in the corridor of the interview room and what they did was five minutes before your interview they take your portfolio case and they open it up in their little room and look at the things that you've done they like lay them out and then they invite you over so I was invited over 
and they we all shook hands there were like four of them which was quite overwhelming because my previous interview experiences were only with like one or two so it was quite scary and they all looked very you know serious in a way but they were so friendly um you know introduced myself they introduced themselves it was really really nice and it was like nothing nothing to overstress about um and so there was a table and you all just stand up like there's no seat which actually is really nice because you can move around and you're more i don't know you, you just feel more in control so you have 20 minutes in the interview and obviously you're stressing like you know 20 minutes is so long like what, what am i going to talk about i i didn't even bring that many art pieces you know like th all these thoughts like get rid of them like I wish I could say that to myself. I know it's easier said than done, but get rid of them because 20 minutes goes by like two. I'm not even joking. What happens is they invite you over and they say, So talk to us about your your art. Just, you, you start off from whatever you want and end with whatever you want. Um, the questions they ask you are very, very specific to what you say i was stressing so much about it i was like what if i run out of things to say you know and what happens is you start talking about one piece and your you know your purpose your techniques what you enjoyed about it how long the process took um you know it was it was all very it flowed so well and so easily and you just if if you if you're stuck on one art piece you just say Oh, I'd really like to talk to you about this piece now. You just start talking about the other piece and if what happens is they can stop you at any point and ask you an extra question like, so was this part of your um, program? Was this part of your IB program? And you go, yes, it was. And if they ask you that, I really, really recommend you to say, however, this piece I did on my own because that's what they're looking for. They're looking at that, like, that extra passion that you have that's not just from the education program that you're part of but from your own you know intentions so another thing i really do suggest for you to bring something that obviously something that you are proud of something that you're that you have a strong connection with and because it'll just be easy to talk about it for you know however long you want but also i really really advise anyone to bring something that they're not proud of because um it's really nice it's really great i think for an artist to be able to recognize something that went wrong in their art piece and it just shows that you can identify things that have a potential have the potential to look better if you did this and that instead of you know that also you need to try and look as interested as you can while you're talking about your artwork i know you're stressed like i was so stressed but you have to smile you have to be like oh my gosh and this idea uh, like you know something like that i think if you show that then they start to see it and they start to feel the same way maybe so that's that's what i'd say in terms of that okay so great news my camera died thank you thank you but it's resurrected now so i think it should be fine so um as i was saying before it rudely died on me i made a note of um a couple of questions that I remember them asking and this is very very individual to the person because they ask you questions depending on exactly what you say um, they asked me to explain the purpose behind a piece of work I think I was talking about one of my art pieces it was like a study of um, nail polish and they were like oh so what was the purpose behind it and I was like oh good question uh, <laughs> no it was, it was fine it was fine I mean, clearly not because I got rejected, but you know what? Like, I did the best I could at that time. We won't talk about it. So, <laughs> um, they asked me what work you've produced um, outside of your education system. They knew I didn't take foundation years, so they were interested in um, seeing if I had the ability to do something outside of the IB program. Since I didn't take a foundation, you know, they want to know why I didn't take a foundation. Was I, was I good enough? And Clearly not. Um, <laughs> No, clearly I wasn't good enough, that's a fact. So I think the fact that I wasn't good enough, obviously obviously that's why I got rejected, but they wanted to see if I was. So they asked you questions like, so what have you done outside of this? They just want to ask things that will bring out the personal passion in you. And oh my God, that sounds so cringy. Like, 
and that's no different to any other art university of course but um i feel like i was so much more intimidated by the oxford examiners and the other examiners because other examiners which i talked to were a lot more chilled you know i don't know it's just the vibe was different but with the examiners at oxford it was a lot more um there's a lot more tension i feel just because uh, uh, like there were four of them like uh, can you just there were four of them and one of me and that overwhelmed me but um the fact that they were all friendly is fine so that kind of balanced it out a little other than that other than those questions there wasn't much that they asked at all but at the end this is the important bit um the art history teacher was there and he's also like art history is also part of the fine art course so he was there and he had asked me if I had any interest in the history of art and if I've done any, you know, research in, you know, art history or whatever. And Fine Art IB doesn't have art history in it, um, but it does, actually, wait, it does. What are we talking about? But I didn't even talk about that. I talked about my extended essay once he asked me that question and my research um, in the topic of my interest, which is gender stereotype in art from pop art to now, what's changed? And I just talked about the artists that I researched about, like Roy Lichtenstein and the feminist um, movement, because it was a massive part of the, you know, how gender stereotypes changed in the arts. Um, so I talked about people like Barbara Kruger, Mary Beth Edelson, and Betty Tompkins, and a couple more, but that was sort of like, who I mentioned and I don't know like he seemed really pleased I thought I did really well I left that room I was like you know I'm good I'm good to go but clearly not so like I had a great experience but I think I was really oblivious if you dedicate enough time to do art in your own time outside of A-levels outside of IB or any other um, education program then you there's no reason for you not to get in without foundation year clearly i'm not a great example of this but um it is possible and just do the best you can don't stress think about this video think about i mean if things have changed i'm really sorry i try my best <laughs> this is so bad no if things have changed at least you know what to expect in terms of how the interview is and what happens, um, what happens in the practical exam, you know, run, run to the rooms as fast as you can, get as many things you need, because guys, there's literally not gonna be any space if you take your time, okay? There is no time, you gotta start, you gotta find your space, you gotta find your table, you gotta get all your materials before there's none left, and just get to work. Okay, now that just probably stressed you all out. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you do have any more questions about my experience or accommodation what college i applied to portfolio questions that you're worried about please just write them down in the comments below and i'll try to reply to as many of them as i can that's all that i have for this video and yeah just best of luck for any future applications and i'm sure all of you will do great